What would be a practical approach for developing your shadow? Well, that's a good one. Let's let's do a little review of Jungian psychology. The first thing is, if you want to know about this, the proper source is Carl Jung's Collected Works, Volume Nine, uh, vo Volume Nine, and there's two parts to Volume Nine, A and B, published as separate texts. And Volume Nine is called Archetypes of the Collective Unconscious, and the other one is called uh, um, Ion. But in Archetypes of the Collective Unconscious, there's a good discussion of the persona and the shadow and the persona you could say is a good way of thinking about it you know you watch all those rom-coms where there's always kind of a beta male guy who's being real friendly and always failing miserably with the women because basically he's lying to himself and to them um, he's a persona and a persona is the face that you show to the world when you're trying to uh, pretend and to convince yourself and others that you're, I would say harmless, but we could say a good person. But a good person isn't harmless. A good person is capable of, well, maybe a good person is capable of anything, but is willing to hold that in abeyance. I read this interesting commentary a little while ago on a statement by Christ in the New Testament, and the statement generally interpreted is that the meek shall inherit the earth but I was looking up the multiple translations of the word meek and meek is actually derived from a Greek word of course um, because the Bible at least some of the original forms of the Bible were in Greek um, and that word didn't exactly mean meek it meant something like uh, those who have weapons and the ability to use them but sir but determined to keep them sheathed will inherit the world and that means that people who are capable of force let's say but decide not to use it are in the proper moral position and Nietzsche commented on that a fair bit too you know he he um, thought of most moral morality as cowardice not because morality itself was cowardice but because most people who are cowards disguise their coward cowardice as morality and they claim that their harmlessness which is actually a consequence of their fear and inability to be harmful say or to be dangerous is actually a sign of their moral integrity and that's a really bad idea so you know if you're an axe murderer but you don't have an axe that doesn't mean that you're moral so now with regards to so that's the persona and the persona is the mask that you wear, and that's what persona means, is the mask that you wear to convince yourself and the world that you're not a terrible monster, so that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't have to run away screaming. You know, and you might think, well, that's a bit of an overstatement, but Jung was very interested in phenomena such as, um, say, psychological, the psychological phenomena that would characterize the actions of someone who might be an Auschwitz camp guard, for example. And... Uh, you know, that's a pretty monstrous form of behavior. And the thing about Auschwitz camp guards is that there's no reason to assume, really, that they were much different than normal people. Now, there would have been exceptions, obviously. But, and what that means is that perhaps you too could be an Auschwitz camp guard and perhaps you would even derive some enjoyment out of it. And you might think not, but you shouldn't think not so quickly. And what that also implies is that if you could see what that meant when you looked in the mirror and looked at yourself, you might run away screaming because you'd have a revelation of just exactly what the human being is capable of. And that's a very unpleasant revelation and also one of the things that stops people from being enlightened because that revelation of the evil of the self is part of the journey to enlightenment and an early part. Now the shadow would be all the parts of the personality that the persona rejects. And that might be the aggressive element. Certainly the case, that's the case with, for people who are hyper agreeable. And now you can tell, I think one of the best, there's two pathways to the development of the shadow and they're tightly allied with one another. Um, the fundamental pathway is truth and that's to face the bitter truth about yourself. But to break that down more particularly, you might think about that as the capacity to observe your own resentment you're going to be resentful and bitter in many situations because you don't get what you want. And if you watch that resentment and bitterness, you'll see that it produces fantasies that can be unbelievably dark. 
And that can be very frightening. And you might not want to admit to yourself that you're actually capable of having fantasies like that or impulses of, like that or aggressive feelings like that. But the thing is, is that if those aggressive feelings and impulses and fantasies are integrated into your character, it's like you're opening up a dialogue with a part of yourself that can be very forceful and strong and dangerous. And it's really useful to be dangerous because if you can... If you can be dangerous, you often don't have to be. And it's, it's often weak people. For example, it's weak men, generally speaking, who rape. You know, that, that's a very, very common occurrence. And that's a violent act, but it's born out of weakness, not out of strength. That's for sure. And so, anyways, you attend to your resentment honestly. And you observe yourself and what you're actually like. You've got to pay attention as if you don't know yourself. As if you might harbor hidden devils. And then maybe they'll emerge. Now... Jung also felt that sort of embedded inside the shadow were the contrasexual tendencies. And so, for example, sometimes you see people who are well-developed men, let's say, and we can, we can also talk about women in this regard. Men who've integrated their shadow often also develop a kind of peculiar grace that would be a consequence of not only allowing their aggressive side to step forward, but also their, their feminine and compassionate side that, might, that they may have kept squelched because of embarrassment about it or because they'd been harassed for being weak or any number of things. So, but the practical approach for developing your shadow, I would say, is to co contemplate and consider your resentment and notice what it says. Because your resentment will also tell you what you have to say. You know, so look, look at what happened at Google this weekend. You know, James Damore wrote that memo and you can imagine he was pretty angry and perhaps even somewhat resentful at having to attend that diversity seminar. And I'm really just using this as an example. But what he did was decide that that meant that he had something that he had to say. And then look at the consequences of that, man. It's un absolutely unbelievable. And so, you know, if you're feeling oppressed at work or you're oppressed in your life or, or you know, or you're oppressing yourself, then you've got to notice that you're feeling oppressed. Then you have to notice that you're feeling resentful, re resentful and, and, and angry and bitter and maybe even like Cain in the story of Cain and Abel because Cain is sort of the archetypal bitter man. And then you have to decide what it is that you need to do in order to remove from yourself that bitterness. And that usually means that there's something that you have to say. And then you have to say it because your soul depends on it. And not only does your soul depend on it, I would say the fate of the world depends on it because... You know, you might be wrong and then you should be straightened out. Maybe you're just being whiny and you have to talk to somebody about that. But it may be that you're actually detecting something wrong, some tyranny that's directed towards you and other people. And it's like your moral obligation to speak up about it. And so many workplaces become toxic, to use a terrible cliche, because the people in them won't speak up for what they actually want. Or they speak up too late and then they're all twisted up about it and... And, you know, they're torturing other people because they're so unhappy and so forth and so on. So practical approach for developing your shadow fundamentally is radical honesty. And Jung said that, you know, a genuine moral effort was a good substitute for psychotherapy.